Welcome back to the second concert of our class challenge. Yesterday, I told you about the tradition my students have of a yearly class project. Let me tell you a little about how the themes for this present project came about. I have always believed that as musicians, we have the responsibility to be upstanding and contributing members of society. I try to instill a sense of civic responsibility in these wonderful young talents. Yes, we work hard. And yes, we try to give pleasure to our audiences. And that is certainly a wonderful thing. But there's a whole world out there made up of people who are poor, food insecure, or at risk in many other ways. People who have no access to what we do. And we must not ignore them. And so over the years, we have discussed many ways in which we, musicians, can become responsible citizens and reach out to those in need. Obviously, we use our musical skills to do so. Many in the class have participated in the outreach programs that our school is engaged in and interacted with children, the elderly, and the sick. COVID interrupted everything, and these activities, like everything else, were put on hold. And then, in May, George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis, and questions of inequity and racism in our society became the focus of discussion all over the country, perhaps even the world. When we gathered back after the summer holidays and had our first class meeting, we did, of course, talk about these dramatic events. I reiterated my belief that we all have a responsibility to do something about issues of such great importance, and that just because we, a small class of violin students and their teacher, could not change the world, did not absolve us of responsibility of doing our share. So we began discussing what we could do. The question of inequity in the music world came up. We decided to start by looking at our own community. How do we interact with each other? Are we sensitive to problems in our midst? And what do we do about them? These are serious questions with complicated solutions, and starting a conversation about it was a good beginning. We will certainly continue to work toward a more equitable, hospitable environment for all in our school. But we also felt that we wanted to do something of a musical nature. We realized that we know very little about music composed by marginalized communities. We all are the poorer for ignoring that repertoire. And now is a wonderful opportunity to explore it. This is by no means an attempt to replace the canon. It is simply a desire to broaden it. The Violin Channel gave us a platform to present some of this music. And we are truly grateful for this opportunity. Hello, everyone. My name is Maria Yudenich, and I am pleased to welcome you to the second night of our studio, Miriam Freeth's studio challenge project titled Homage, or Homage, given that we are still in the middle of a pandemic and trying to stay safe at home. However, you may have seen at the first concert, and we'll see today, that some of these recordings were made in larger spaces. Our school, NEC, has been very diligent with testing and precautions, which has allowed us to continue with our hybrid learning system, which in turn uh, means we are lucky enough to have access to concert halls and these larger spaces. Thank you if you tuned in for our first night of the challenge. Uh, which was dedicated to musical homages within composer circles. Tonight is a bit of a two-parter. The first part is a series of pieces, each an homage to the performer's uh, heritage. There are four cultures represented in this first half of the program, Taiwanese, uh, Chinese, Korean American, and Mexican. The second part, the last three pieces of the program, are an homage to English composers, two of which are not performed as much as they really should be. We have Edward Elgar, Rebecca Clark, and Samuel Coleridge-Taylor, each and all highlighting their incredible capacity for lyrical, colorful beauty. One of our biggest goals for this whole project was to build a more inclusive program, a more inclusive repertoire 
that represents more of our world and more of us. So we hope you delight in this adventure of something new, something personal, valuable, and beautiful. Hi, my name is Joy Wei. I'm from Taiwan. This is my second year studying at NEC. Today, I'll be performing free violin pieces with my pianist Ping An Ling, which is fantasy Hanchen melody, Song of Taiwan, and I Love Taiwan, uh, composed by Taiwanese composer Xiao Tairan. So let me tell you about the composer and the music. Mr. Xiao is considered one of the most influential composer in Taiwan. He was born in 1938 and he immigrated to Los Angeles since 1977. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2015. Mr. Xiao devoted his life into, uh, to integrating Taiwanese music into Western music composition. After he had immigrated to the U.S., he started to compose music that reveals his nostalgia. The first piece is Fantasy Hanchen Melody, composed in 1973. In this piece, violin and piano show the life of Hanchen. The music is divided into three sections. The first section describes the lovely Hanchen, a small town in the southern part of Taiwan. The melody showing sweetness and some nostalgia. In contrast, the second section is characterized by faster rhythmic pattern, which composer wanted to describe the subtropical climate in southern Taiwan, which is northwest rain. The third section came back to the theme which described the beauty of the Hunchun after the northwest rain. The second piece is the Song of Taiwan, composed in 1970. In this piece, Mr. Xiao used two materials to compose. The first one he used was from Taiwanese opera. The character of Taiwanese opera is very joyful and very lively. So while you listen to it, you can clearly hear the A section sounds very active and very energetic. In contrast, the B section, he used a melody from Ping Pu group which is one of the group in Taiwanese uh, native people. The music gives us more deep and melancholy feeling. So compared to the A section, it is much more lyrical. The third piece is I Love Taiwan, composed in 1998. This piece is talking about although the land of Taiwan is not big, but with the efforts from older generation, we have cult uh, cultivated a lot of things. We believe as long as we keep our heart for our homeland and keep, wor um, keep hard working, we'll be able to get happiness here. The reason that I chose to work on Mr. Xiao's violin works because I was initially attracted by his works written in a way that represent one's heritage. And because of this great opportunity, I get the chance to really dive into his works. So, and especially, I feel very connected and being very proud of playing his works that represent our culture. I hope you will enjoy my playing and get to like and get to know about the music from Mr. Shaw's works. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Julian Ree, and today I'll be performing for you selections from Earl Kim's 12 Caprices for Solo Violin. This piece isn't as commonly performed, and Earl Kim himself isn't as widely known, but as I was searching for a piece to perform for the project, I came across Earl Kim, and his personal story really spoke to me. So like me, Earl Kim was Korean-American. He was born in the United States, and he was raised by Korean immigrant parents. He spent much of his education in Massachusetts, where he studied and he taught, and I'm also currently studying in Massachusetts. So his personal story, coupled together with the fact that he's not as widely known, these created a very strong urge and a desire for me to convey his music to today's audiences. And so now just to give a bit of an overview to the piece, the piece begins with a motto. And what a motto is, is just a theme or a motif that serves as the foundation for the 12 caprices. And so the motto is a series of six chords, and these six chords undergo many evolutions and they transform into various characters on a technical and on a musical level. And so just to give you an example, the first two chords of the motto begin like this. And now his fourth caprice, for example, begins like this. And so as you can hear, the first two chords of the motto and the first two chords of the fourth caprice are exactly the same. But now what Earl Kim does is he creates a really beautiful melody in the fourth caprice by adding some ornamentation to that. And so now every caprice has this quality. It takes the motto and it creates a whole new character. And so I hope you can hear how Earl Kim creates a very, very diverse emotional world all based on six chords. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Li Yuan, and uh, today I am performing two pieces for you. The first one I'm playing is called Nostalgia by Si Chong Ma, Ma Si Chong. Uh, this piece was composed in 1937 and always considered as one of the greatest violin compositions of 20th century China. Uh, the second piece I'm performing is called Tambri Ching Wa by Chrysler. I wish you enjoy and hope you are staying safe and healthy. Thank you.
name is Hannah Goldstick, and I'll be playing Canto Obscuro for solo violin by Mexican contemporary composer Mariana Villanueva. This piece was composed in 1992, and its full title is Dark Song for Black Roses. As you'll see, it combines many elements of song and dance throughout. When we began planning for this project, I was really excited to find a piece that was both new to me, but also something that isn't represented in the traditional violin repertoire. Learning this piece also gave me the chance to connect with my own family's Mexican heritage, and I had a lot of fun preparing it and recording it. And I'm hoping that in the future I'll be able to play it many more times, because I feel like it's a piece that's really worth sharing. I hope you come to love it as much as I do. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Tiffany Young and I'm a first year undergrad student at NEC from Toronto, Canada. Today's program pays homage to English composers and so my brother Christopher and I will be playing Romance by Elgar, who is considered to be one of the most prominent English composers of his generation. You may know Elgar from his cello concerto or the Enigma variations, but his romance for violin and piano is definitely not as well known. This piece was written when he was quite young, around 20, and what's even more amazing is that besides learning a little bit from his father, who was a church organist and violinist, he was practically a self-taught musician and learned to compose on his own. He always considered himself to be an outsider in the musical world and struggled to establish himself as a preeminent composer. I think that this piece reflects these feelings and his struggle, and to me feels nostalgic, almost as if he is reminiscing on old memories. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hello again, my name is Maria Yudenich and I will be playing the next piece on the program with Lorena Teku at the piano. The piece is titled Midsummer Moon and is composed by English composer Rebecca Clark. Clark was internationally renowned as a viola virtuoso and though her compositional output wasn't extremely large, the pieces of hers that have been published have a distinct style and warmth to them. Midsummer Moon has touches of Impressionism in it, in a way that the piano and violin smoothly flow in and out of each other's lines and create this beautiful atmosphere um, that, that is continuously in motion. This piece was originally supposed to be performed by a fellow studio mate, but due to a COVID scare and the timing of our required test at school, Unfortunately, she was unable to record the piece. Though the circumstances aren't the happiest, I am extremely delighted to have put this beautiful piece in my repertoire.
The next and last piece on this program, which I will play with Sahun Sam Hong, is the full suite of four pieces by English Romantic composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Not to be confused with English Romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Maybe it doesn't come as a surprise, but the composer was named after the poet, and coincidentally the poet became a great source of inspiration for Coleridge Taylor later in his life. One cool fact about Coleridge Taylor's life is that in 1904, he was received by Theodore Roosevelt at the White House, which was in those days a rare honor for a man of African descent. These four pieces each have titles, and the way we've ordered them with Sam, first comes the Cavatina, then the Barcarolle, Contemplation, and ending with Pastoral. Each of them is graceful and warms the heart, and hopefully imbues you with a little positivity and beauty, two things we are in dire need of right now.
Thank you. 